Ugh. Jay, this is not what I had in mind for a fun time, man. What are we doing? What? We're having fun, aren't we? This is not fun. Nothing about this is fun. Ah, you're just overreacting. I am not Come overreacting! On. Dude, what the heck was that? That is not what I had in mind today. It's the Dirt Breaker and Salad Bar. Nothing ever goes right here. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. Anywho, my name's Kist, and welcome back to another episode of Trackling 101. And guys, guess what? We're not alone. We're joined by... Hello, darkness, my old friend. Or so I thought. Nah, just kidding guys. Welcome back to another episode of Trackling 101. Today we're doing something rather different. We are going to showcase building on the multiplayer side. If you ever needed to join up with your friends or you're joining some other servers, it is time to actually showcase how you can build in multiplayer. Nothing too crazy is going to be going on in terms of the actual mechanics and the building aspect, but you'll quickly find out that there's some little nuances. Now what is the actual plan today? What is happening? Where are we? Like I said, we're on Janoom's server here. So again, man, thank you for letting me come on. No problem. Awesome. We are here near the sawmill and we are actually heading towards the logging camp. Now, wait a minute, where is the logging camp? The logging camp is actually over here. That's not where it's supposed to be. Exactly. We are playing on a moved industries world and he decided to move the logging camp down to where the smelter usually is. And our challenge today is we are going to be rebuilding this grade down to the logging camp. So without further ado, let's actually jump into the building. To actually begin the construction, we're heading back a little bit closer to the sawmill. Now, a few disclaimers before we actually begin is you may not hear too much from Janum today. Um, he just wanted to watch and I want to say listen in to how we do things and learn some building aspects. Another thing you might notice is a lot of stuttering when I either walk or between placing things. Right now, I am playing over in America and Janum servers in Australia, so there might be a little bit of lag and latency between the two of us. All right, the actual building. I got permission to modify some stuff, and what we're actually going to do first is fix this curve. And if you remember from the track laying just episodes, we talked about it in the refinery and the ironworks, where we have a double track curve. The first we need to do is find out the angle for the curve, and we got to fit it right down this gorge, so let's do that real quickly. So around 111 was the radius, or my bad, 95 was the radius, but for 111 meters. We can probably do 50 or maybe like 40, 40, 40, something around there. And let's do that here. Now that we have that curve in place, the next we need to do is match the outside rail. Now remember, when we build on a double track curve, we usually want to build it on the inside. Due to the properties of a curve, the inside line travels less distance, so it's always better to get the shorter line first. So once you get your curve in place, and you want to build it in shorter segments so we can keep it as much of a circle as possible, what you want to do next is place your double track spacing. He does it a little bit different than I do. He likes to do just switch to switch, while I do switch to, or I do a switch crossover, then a switch. No, wait a minute. I can't link to this switch. What's going on? For whatever the reason, in multiplayer servers, the client cannot link to certain switches. Remember, each spline has a direction, and sometimes you may not be able to link to all the points on a switch. I can do so here. I can do so from the stand. And you saw we linked to the turnout, but for whatever the reason, we cannot link to this part of it. And there's two things we can do. We can have the host help place the spline. He can connect to it as follows. He just placed it, no problem. The other thing we can do is we have to replace the switch, but from the switch stand. So using whatever piece, it's a, if it's regular track or if it's a crossover, go ahead and place it from the switch stand and replace the same switch. 
now I can actually build from this point. But regardless, once I have the actual link in place, I'm gonna extend this piece out 18.5 meters. If you do a switch to switch crossover, if you wanna make it flush with one of the switches, it is 18.5 meters. From there, what we can do is connect both these pieces on the outside. And what you might notice is now they are parallel. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but to ensure that the curves are parallel, we are going to do the double track spacing for all the points. So let's just power through real quickly and get this curve in place. And there we go. We got our first curve in place and it's double track. A little bit smoother, wider than the one before, but now we are able to push on without any issues. What is happening here? Well, we are going to change the order of switches and what is going on, but what's rather interesting is he merges the double track into a single point just on the other side of the bridge. So we don't actually need to do a full double track crossover. We're going to keep these two in place and build forward. So we just cleared some of the tracks away and we can actually just continue. Rather easy part where we're just gonna build straight out. No specific value needed, we're just gonna build a straight piece out. I think 80 would probably be fine. And we'll do it to the other side as well. Here, what I'm thinking is we have a little bit of an interesting track layout. I think what might make a little bit of sense is to either start the switch here so we can curve out to the necessary grade or continue straight for a little bit and then have a switch that turns. But we have a lot of height we need to cover. So I think maybe actually pushing the switch back a little bit will help, but maybe not because of the terrain. So let's see if I were to place a switch here. Just did a little bit of testing and this, the switch distance will actually work. But if you didn't know this, the actual radius for the switch turnout is around 91 meters. If I just pick the 91 meter radius and drag a spline out, you notice we run right into the mountain rather quickly. But that is okay, because we can just figure out a bigger radius. So let's see what good radius will be. We figured out the radius. I think a 245 meter radius curve will do fine. And we're gonna build it from the switch. The reason for it is I don't want the curve that we're going to have here clip into the grade we're going to be building from the switch. So to make sure they're actually parallel still, I replace the switch and now they should be parallel before this radius of a curve. I'm going to extend it a little bit out, Let's, I think 45 meters would be a good distance. We're going to switch to a stone wall to actually build, I think do 10, our favorite number 10. And now let's see which bridge. Janum just told me old, so we're gonna do the old bridge. And we have a big distance to cover, so we're gonna do a larger bridge to right, probably around here, somewhere close. So we have 140 meters. Okay, great, we can place a giant bridge like this, but it might be good to break it up into smaller segments, we'll see. But once we're back close to the terrain, we can replace this with a stone wall. Real quickly, um, Junior and I just had a conversation about what the plan is here. And instead of keeping it a constant curve, what we're gonna do is try to curve it back into the original line. Now there's a good amount of distance we need to cover. So what is the best option? Well, it's to simply spiral curve it back into it. Remember a spiral curve just literally spirals down into the center. It requires a sharper radius over time. Let's see here, we do have a slight grade. I'm gonna ask him, do you mind deleting the bridge real quickly? Do you have a grade up? I think I'm gonna start the grade here. We're rather tight, so we'll do 100 for 15 meters. Still doing ground wall. Let's see, if I keep it 100, we'll probably go even steeper to around 90. 90 would probably actually work. But just because I wanna be able to spiral it back out, we're gonna go 95 or 85 for around 35 meters, like so. There is a slight grade still. But now we're keeping it. You can actually probably do a bridge here. 
And I wonder what happens if I just link the bridge from here to that other point. It's rather smooth, but I don't think I'm too happy with how it's entering here. I think it looks rather annoying. Yeah, it's really, really smooth and sharpness out of nowhere. So let's see if we can fix it. Awesome, there we go. Just spent a few minutes, um, the both of us were trying to get it, see where it lined up. And I think we got it, looks rather good. Uh, matches up, we don't have to change anything else. One thing I do want to change is the actual transition piece over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete both these stone wall segments. Uh oh. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, got that back in place. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to freeform connect these two pieces. It should provide a little bit of a smoother looking transition between the wider to narrower part of the curve. But regardless, I think this part's done. We can actually clean up a little bit and continue on. Okay, just did some cleanup. I replaced some of the segments to add it to the aesthetic. And now we can actually start with the grade. We're not going to worry too much about this left line, but we can actually fix it right here just by simply replacing the pieces. Let's see what happens if we just connect these two. Oh, looks like we can't because of the mountain, so let's see if we can find the angle real quickly. Awesome, there we go, wasn't too bad. Now, I'm gonna make a plea here to actually switch the railing on this bridge. And why? Now, this always comes down to personal preference. And you can see Janum did it on the right side. So let's ask him, what's the reason for having a railing on the right side? Uh, the reason uh, in this specific circumstance is uh, A, it's a right hand curve, and B, everything you're going to be seeing is on the right hand side. So it's all it's looking down into the valley. It's for if the, rail, the railway gets abandoned, it can at least be a footbridge. Right, so people can view it later on. But, or if the railway gets torn up, they can keep the bridge and just put like a set of stairs and it'll be like a scenic overlook. Very nice. For me, my opinion, my preference is we can actually see on this bridge over here. It's personally, I like my bridges on the outside of the curve, not necessarily specific to one direction, but on the outside of the curve. The reason for this is so it kind of acts like a protection against falling off. Trains are going to want to lean or push themselves to the outside. So for me, I feel like it gives a nice sense of um, stability for the bridge. But there you go, we have two reasons for two different styles of building. Neither or is correct, it all comes down to your preference, but I at least wanted to ask and show you guys the difference between them. Now we continue on, the grade. You can already tell we're a little bit higher than his original grade, but that's no problem. We have one thing to keep in mind, is the actual start of the grade. Remember, if I were to simply place a piece down, let's say he does negative three and a half, so let's do negative three and a half for 25 meters. And then I'm gonna continue the grade from right here. Okay, great, now we're on a negative three and a half down. If I were to delete this piece, and let me just do a negative three and a half all the way. What you might notice is that there are two different heights. And this is because one of the calculations for simply the splines in Railroads Online. What they do is they try to create the smoothest transition from level ground onto the grade. So if you're building a long piece from, let's say, a flat switch, you need to be careful of this. In my opinion, I think it's better to do a shorter transition piece and then more of the actual grade. So what are we going to do here? Well, we have to curve over to the left. You can see I already started messing with this. But we have to be careful here. If I were to keep it at 3%, watch what happens as soon as I flatten it back out. It becomes higher all of a sudden. As soon as I start curving it, the grade itself changes. So I have to ask myself, is it really 3% or is it now steeper? Turns out it actually is slightly steeper. So instead of doing a 3.5% down right away, we're actually going to do a shorter segment of 3%. 
So slight correction, we just had a little conversation um, and he had the suggestion to actually probably straighten it back out before turning it. And I think I can agree with that because it turns out it actually will make a smoother transition. So a piece of advice there, if you don't want to turn it right away from a switch or whatever the case might be, maybe try putting a straight piece instead to create a better transition. From here, we can do our curve. Let's go straight to negative 100 meters. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. I don't think though, um, now I'm looking at it, I don't know if I like it how far it's sticking out. So I think maybe we can do a slightly sharper of a curve. 100 was a little too tight, let's see what we can do. Yeah, so we just figured out so a 60 meter curve would work here, but now the problem is we're going into it from a straight. So just like before, we need to do a spiral curve. So we're gonna do a slightly bigger piece for, let's do eight meters. And then we're gonna go straight into a 60 meter curve for around 38 meters would be good. And what we're gonna do is get rid of some of these extra pieces and flatten it back out. So let's do negative 100, so we did eight meters. We're gonna do the same thing here. Now you can see we have a rather smooth curve coming into the transition. So we have the grade transition itself curving right down. It's at 60 meters, but we have a smooth transition into it. From here, we can curve things back right, but, but straighten it out because we have a lot of distance now to work with. So just trying to figure out the actual next piece of track, we have to have a little bit more ground. So I'm gonna redo this piece. Instead of stone wall, I'm gonna do groundwork. Now I'm gonna do a stone wall. And what we can actually do is start curving it for 250 meters in the other direction. This may not be specific to you, but this will work for our cases here. Let's go ahead and build this next segment and I'll be right back. So now we have our next curve in place and we're trying to stick as close to the terrain as possible. We don't want to do some ridiculous giant bridge everywhere. Um, we don't have the curve anymore. We can straighten it back out right here using stone wall again for 10 meters on this side. And then we can transition back to our groundwork. We have this mountain in the way so we can just continue out straight for a little bit, maybe 20 meters. Yeah, I think we can get away with that. We can start curving back here. We have a sharper bend here, but that should be no problem for us. We just gotta do something very similar by doing a spiral curve into it. So let's do 10 meters here, that's our transition. Then we can pick a sharper angle. I think 80 probably may work, not, not steep enough. I think 70 will work. We're not clipping the terrain, I think, too much. <laughs> So we just got our next curve in place and I did flatten it back out on this side, but before continuing with the grid, I actually want to talk about the overall look of it. We have a giant amount of groundwork and fill on the outside edge. Now depending on the person, you may not like this, uh, maybe you do, I personally think it's fine, but it may look kind of sketchy, maybe not the most realistic because there's no border, there's no protection. What you can do is maybe on the thickest part of the groundwork replace it maybe with a wall or some kind of bridge. This way we're creating maybe a better sense of foundation and it's actually structured. So I think we're gonna keep this just to kind of break up the look of it and make sure it actually looks strong and protected. Awesome, now we can continue on just like normal. We're just gonna continue building with the grade. We have our next transition piece in for a bridge. It's a short one here, just keep it straight for around, let's do 16, make it a nice a whole number. What we can do is just, just delete some of these next pieces, but we're gonna do the exact same thing. Keep stone wall, because we're close to the terrain. We can extend it out a little bit. Let's do 16 meters as well. And now we're gonna curve a bridge to the right. Okay, we have our next bridge in place, but I think we might change up the actual bridge type. He asked if we can do it on the other side, so let's do it here. Awesome. Now we have a little V-Bing platform, 
And I think about this bridge too, there actually is no reason to do a railing here because it's on a straight piece. And if you want to, we may not do this, but if you want to, what you can do is use a wooden bridge without any railing just to fill in the gap here. It breaks up the pallet that we're using, but since it's straight, there's no reason for a railing. It makes it a little bit more open feeling as we're heading down. So after fixing those pieces, what we can do now is just continue with the grade. We have our next curve we have to worry about. Now what's interesting here is we have a pretty long curve, I'm going to say, that goes around two parts of the mountain. What I'm going to try to do is figure out the angle that's going to nicely fit around both edges. I think around 97, 96 area should prove really nice. I think we're going to do 97. However, we are coming from another curve, so it might be better to do a slightly wider piece. We'll do 100, negative 140 for around 10 meters as well. And what we're trying to do is create a little bit of a smoother transition between those two curves. What I am then going to do is find that angle. I'm not going to build this piece, but I just want to find the angle of the curve. So it turns out 90 meters was the radius we need. And we can actually just build a bridge this time all the way over here. Let's do, I think, 70. 70 meters is probably a good number for this. Since we're close to the train, we're going to use our stone wall and flatten it back out a little bit. Let's do 120 this time. It's the same thing. Let's do 12 meters. Awesome. We'll probably use groundwork here as well. Let's do a short little piece. On second thought, I actually think continuing stone wall would probably be better here. So we're going to do a shorter piece of 6 meters just to create a smoother transition between two curves. What we're going to do is flatten it or start curving it back the other way. What we're going to do now is actually just drag out a longer piece if we can create a nice consistent curve. But I don't think we can because it's rather long and rather wide. So I think we're going to do 160 here and then maybe straighten it back out on the other side. Then, just like before, we can continue with stone wall. I believe we might be able to do a, just keep the same curve and replace it somewhere else. I think I'm gonna try to angle it towards that mountain as best I can, but let's do it in shorter segments. Let's do 25 here. So we can continue out 25 maybe. Yeah, looks like a good angle, keeping the same curve. Now the actual bridge, we can do a few things. We can do another wooden bridge, but I think the wooden bridges are too busy for this long of a gap. I think instead we're going to do a steel bridge. We don't need a curve, we can just keep it straight. Yeah, it doesn't look too too bad if we take a step back. So here's the result of using a steel bridge over a wooden bridge. Both of us agree it looks a little bit better, it creates it more open, and one thing he liked is that he can still put tracks underneath it and do something later on over here if he needs to. But again, if you need something to fill a longer gap or a bigger gap, you have to be kind of careful with using the wooden bridges as there's a lot going on. The steel bridges, they're not as many supports and they're a little bit more open and it doesn't clutter the space as much. So we're going to keep this in and it looks pretty good so far. Now the next part of the grade is rather interesting. What Janum did is he created a little S-bend here, kind of chicaning around the mountain, but he used 30 meter curves instead. And this is actually the reason we're building this grade in the first place, is for this bend right here. This is the actual problem. We're gonna try to fix it and see if we can eliminate doing this S-bend. Let's see what we can do. So for our next piece, we're gonna do another curve back for just a little bit. I think we're gonna do two pieces. Let's do, I think 20, 20 meters should be good. Now, at first glance, seeing it this close to the terrain may give you alarm, but do not fear. Here is why. The only thing stopping train going over this part is the actual inside of the rail. Terrain can get really close to the rail as long as it just doesn't go on the inside of the rail. When it comes to the actual outside of the terrain, the only thing you have to worry about is the engines hitting it, the actual frame, and cabs, and the design of the engines and cars hitting it. But we have the wheels, so the cabs actually going to be rather high, and we're not going to clip the terrain here. Moving on, keeping that same radius, I just extended it 15 more meters out, and now I'm going to do a bridge. Again, with our old style for this, we're going to do... I think maybe 16 meters out, that seems to be fine. What I can then do is just flatten this back out. Okay, awesome. Just powering forward again and start curving it back the other way. Now, we do have a tight corner here. 
And I don't think we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we do want to curve around this bend. I think we're going to do 12 meters out and immediately go down to a 50 meter curve, not 30. Excellent. It's a little bit tight, but it makes sense. It looks good too. We have a nice smooth transition. So if I were to extend this out, you can see we're going to be wider than he was originally. So we have to compromise here. We can't follow the terrain exactly. We're going to have to continue it all the way around. We're going to actually build it slightly shorter here, 10 more meters out. Then I'm going to use a bridge this time. I think I'm going to use just a regular wooden one since we're kind of close. Do 100 meters for eight. I'm going to flatten it back out for just a quick second. Go back to using stone wall since we're close. We're going to turn it 100 in the other direction for again another 8 meters. Now I think we should probably get away with using groundwork. So we had a slight issue. I just tried testing the curve and it was actually going to hit that mountain he is standing on. And to fix this, I, th I think it was because we straightened it out real quickly. So a fix to this is to chicane it, turn it back the other direction, uh, and then start in the curve. So that was our 100 meter segment. And if I go straight to a 50 meter, you can then see we actually have a lot more space to do it. And it will actually make it no problem. So let's do a, maybe a 20 meter, keep it relatively simple, and we can transition back to our groundwork. And we're going to stop here with the grade because we have to actually talk about entering the grade. How are we going to flatten it back out? So when it comes to connecting the grade, we built it all the way down so far, but now we have to connect it here. Instead of trying to guess to the height of the actual rail we're on now, instead what I'm going to do is build from this switch. This is where we have to go, so what better place than the place we have to go? So we're going to extend this out just a little bit. Nothing's final, and we're going to turn it back this way. Awesome. What I'm going to try to do here is just use this piece as reference. I'm going to continue our grade here, but see if I can match it down to this track. Once I have done that, I can actually just flatten it back out. I think 15 meters, that works. So we have that transition piece finally in place. We can simply just connect back up to our rail. Ta-da! And now the grade is complete. Except for what the heck is happening here. It's like a little roller coaster bit is happening. That is not the end of the world. It's because we're going from a rather steep grade to level ground. What you need to do to fix it is delete the transition piece and then the piece right after onto the grade, and simply replace the spline meshing the two. What we're actually trying to do is gauge the length of spline, and what you might notice immediately is it is fixed. That dip down is gone and now we have a smooth transition. And our challenge is done. We rebuilt the grade at negative 3.5% all the way down here to his logging camp. We have our nice smooth transition, and we didn't have to do anything else extra. We just had to be smart, pick our curves wisely, and just work it out. And would you look at that. We have the start of the grade all the way up there, and it cascaded along the landscape all the way down to the logging camp. I actually really like this build. This, this was one was rather fun. I don't really do this kind of route too, too often because, well, we have the smelter there. I usually go either around and then down, or I go across and then down. I don't really do the landscape too often. So it's a nice mix up for me, and maybe we can do something like that in the future as well. Again, big shout out to Janoon for letting me come onto this world and giving me the challenge to do this. I think it was really fun. So man, thank you. Oh, oh good. Happy to have you. All right, y'all. I think we're going to end it here. My name is Kist, and I thank you for watching. Bye-bye. See ya.